Hi there, this is Phil Legata. I'm a developer evangelist at Pusher. This is the third video in a short series covering um, some basic usage of Pusher. Uh, in this video we're going to cover publishing information um, from the server. We're going to use PHP because it's uh, very accessible to a lot of people. But we do have libraries available in a number of other technologies. If we're going to server libraries within the docs, you'll see there's a whole bunch of libraries there that you can use from any technology. Ultimately, we're going to call our REST endpoint, so you can access that from uh, any technology that can make an HTTP request. Just provide a little bit of information about Pusher. Again, we're a hosted service. We handle scaling and real-time infrastructure as a service for you. Our focus is to make it as quick and easy as possible to add real-time interactive functionality to your web apps. That could be live content, it could be live blogging, it could be activity streams or interactive experiences like chat or collaborative apps or HTML5 gaming or second screen experiences. Um, again, no configuring for you. Simply use our service to, to add this functionality to your, to your web or mobile app. For this video, we're going to be using the real-time web workshop, which is available on GitHub. Um, github.com slash pusher slash real-time web workshop with hyphens. Okay, so let's have a look at the code where we are right now. Um, we'll jump into the start of... Um, okay, so here's the JavaScript library. We're adding some logging so we know what's going on within the JavaScript library. We're connecting to pusher. We're binding to state change events. We're updating the UI to to show a traffic light and indicate whether or not we're connected. We're subscribing to a messages channel, but then binding to new message events on that channel. And then when we get a new message, we, we add it, we create a list item, we have the text property from the, the event data, we hide it, we append it to, we prepend it, we do now anyway, we prepend it to a messages um, unordered list, and then we slide it down. So let's quickly see that up and running. I'll reload this. Okay, we're connected. Let's jump into the event creator. And every, so we know it's messages. We know it's a new message. We know there's a an event with a text property. And if we send that, we see it instantly appears there. And the same again. So that's the that's where we are are right now. So what we obviously want to do is we want people to be able to publish that information from the app itself. So in order to do that, we obviously need some UI. So we're going to, we're going to add that above, uh, and I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, I'm going to just take this code, and I'm going to append it here. So we've got a label, um, which says message is actually hide, but it's, it's more of an accessibility thing. Um, we've then got a text area which, with the user message uh, ID uh, and a button. So we can jump across and we can reload that. And that's what it look like, looks like. And we can look, see what it looks like in our um, normal desktop app. There we go. So uh, it doesn't look too fancy, but it's nice. Uh, and functional, so obviously it doesn't do anything at the moment other than reload the page when you click it. Um, or probably jQuery handles that click and does something clever. Uh, okay, so what we need to do is we want to add some functionality to handle the click, to take the contents of this message out, and then to send it down to the server so that the server can auth authenticate, potentially, or verify contents of that message and sanitize it before then publishing it to Pusher to distribute to other connected clients. Again, I'm going to just cheat, and I'm going to take some code. Because what we're doing is we're just making an AJAX call down to the server. So I'll paste this in here, and then I'll, I'll walk through it. Uh, 
Okay, so what we're doing is um, when jQuery is ready, we're going to bind to the send button and handle click events. So there's our send button there. Uh, in handle click, we're going to take the contents of the user message element, which is a text area, we're going to trim it, we're going to make sure that there is actually some content, and then we're going to make an Ajax call to new message.php, sending the message that we've extracted. Uh, and if that Ajax call is successful, we'll then clear the text area. So what we can do is if we jump in here, I reload the page to get the new content, and we look at the network tab. Uh, if I then click send, nothing happens because there's no content. If I put in some content in the text area, click send, we can see there's a, there's a call that's being made. Now that's great, that's fine. Uh, and you'll see the form data we're sending text of hello. And the response is 500 server error because we don't support that operation. Okay, so what we do need is a new message.php file. Okay, so we've got a new message file. We also need the pusher PHP library. So if we um, we can actually access this via going to the server libraries within pusher docs, uh, click on PHP generic, um, go here. Uh, within lib, we can look at the pusher PHP library, we can look at the raw content. And I can copy that and I can just create a new file. And then here, I'll paste that, save it as pusher.php. And in here, we want to include it. We also need our application credentials. So we're going to trigger some information from the server using our RESTful API. In order to do that, you need a bunch of information. So here we've got an application ID, an application key, an application secret. And when you publish from the server, the contents of the information that you send is signed using the secret key. Now the only, only places that know about the secret key are your application server and pusher so that when we receive the information that's been signed using your secret key, we can then look at the information and look at the, the signed authentication signature. We can sign the raw information using the secret key that we have and make sure that the two authentication signatures match. So this makes sure that the information is coming from you. So we take this information and we include it in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find an app key. I'm going to define an app. Oh, that was an app ID, wasn't it? Sorry. And define an app secret. Now this should probably be in config. Uh, I shouldn't be exposing this to you, but I can delete this application afterwards. Okay. okay. Now the next thing we need to do is create a pusher object. And passing our app key, our app secret. That app ID, and then all we need to do is trigger the information. So for now, we're just going to hard code this so we know it's messages, we know it's a new message, and we know there's a payload. And we can use an associative array, add text. And 
that's open from the server as the value. Okay, so what we want to do now is test that that functionality is working. So we can do that. Um, you'll also notice that I've, I've changed the URL here. Um, this is so that the the server understands PHP. I was using a Python backend previously. So I can jump over here. And if I change this URL to call the new message, to actually call this file new message.php. You'll see over here, we get an API message call. And within there, there's text hello from server. If I refresh this page again, uh, Apache's playing up on me, but um, yeah, I get another API message call. Refresh the page again, I get another API message call. So we can see that, that that is actually triggering the information. So the only thing we need to do now is extract the information from the call that we make the post call we're making to the server. We want to verify that we're happy with that data. So again, the, the, the server is your authority. Um, you know, you need to be checking to make sure you're happy with that. I'm going to be very naughty and just say I'm happy with that. Obviously in there you, you probably check if uh, the user signed in, you check whether or not you're happy with the contents of the message um, before you actually allow it. And then I can take this text and actually trigger that. So if we jump back to the, the app and if I create a new instance, use a browser window instance, right over there, since we're already posting there, go hello from, go from the left. Okay, great, we're seeing that delivered to both. Um, we can also try the, the um, Safari app. So that's connected. There we go, hello from the iPhone team. So that's showing, uh, we've created a really simple uh, status message update. It could be a chat, it could be, as I say, it could be on um, what are you doing now? Um, it could be anything else. So we, we've shown, uh, we're jumping back to the code. We've shown um, some Ajax functionality. You know, we've uh, handled the click event with the send button. We've got the, the message, we've, we've posted information down to new message.php and we've actually triggered information in just a few lines of code publishing through pusher and distributing instantly to any other connected devices so that's publishing information from the server